Well darn it, I ran out of camera space right when I was in the middle of my mushroom video. Anyhow, I'm going to pick up where I left off. Um, the mushrooms that they're finding are antifungal, antiviral. They have all types of uses. Uh, they're loaded with polysaccharides and there are certain uh, components which help people to boost their immune system if necessary, while at the same time lowering their immune system if they have something like HIV or let's say a, a runaway immune system where their immune system is overly active and it seems to be a regulator of the immune system. Mushrooms are phenomenal and this is why I find the ghost plant such a phenomenal plant is because it's working with the mushrooms. It's growing off the mycelial network and because of that it seems to share associations with the fungal kingdom. You know what I've learned through my searching for plants is that plants that are medicinal tend to look medicinal. And I know that doesn't make sense. That may sound silly to somebody who has not ever gone out looking for wild medicinal plants. But you'll find, nine times out of ten, that if something smells and tastes bad, it's probably not good for you. And if something smells and tastes good, or has the look of, you know, let's take berries for example when you're out in the woods, um, but that doesn't, you know, that, that often works, not always, and do not quote me on that by saying, oh, everything that smells, you know, smells good is good for you. But you can tell the compounds in a plant by the terpenes, the smell, and the terpenes give away a lot about the plant's medicinal benefits. If something smells like lemons or lime, it's going to have certain benefits. If something smells more like beta caryophylline or has a kind of an, uh, a spicy smell, uh, it'll have different effects, and this is found out in the cannabis world with people who are taking different types of cannabis for different types of ailments. Well, the fungal kingdom is really the same way. There are different components for different uses, but mushrooms are very intelligent in their own way. You might not call it consciousness like humans, or maybe you might call it superior to humans. Fungi were here long before we were. Fungi were here long before plants were. Fungi have been here for a billion years. Spores can survive the vacuum of space. They may very well seed planets everywhere. We just don't know. But they're an amazing thing. They seem to be like the neural network that's set up around to keep everything together. And <clears throat> within that network, you find things like the ghost flower. And you find other little ecosystems which seem to all share these particular benefits. And I just find it fascinating. Mushrooms are being used not just for medicinal benefits, they're being used to remediate uh, oil spills, gasoline spills. Um, you can look and see how, how the um, oyster mushroom will just consume oil, and grease, and gasoline. Not only consume it, but they'll make giant delicious mushrooms that you can actually eat. Uh, many mushrooms are accumulator plants, so if they will accumulate heavy toxins, and in that case you do not want to eat them. But for example, oyster mushrooms have been used to remediate uh, radioactive waste, from what I understand, and heavy metals in the soil, things like that. And we're only beginning to understand how these things work. Some of the more subtle plants, delicate plants, like ghost plant, may very well be just something on the fringe of the mushroom kingdom. Something that's learned to work with the mushrooms. In other words, you could maybe say it's like the mycelium learning to peek out of the soil and be like a flower, you know. And I have a certain feeling about nature being aware. And I know a lot of people think that nature is just something that randomly grows and that's their choice. It becomes an individual choice of what you believe to be true. But I believe that the more credit you give to the innate intelligence of nature, the more you'll get back from it. It's kind of like having faith and go out into the woods and say, I love you to the woods. What does that really mean? You know, or what does it mean when you talk to nature, if you do? Well, it means you believe that there's somebody listening, or something listening, really. And uh, that's because everything is listening, whether it be our own subconscious. We seem to be able to tap into this uh, network of benefits of these mushrooms by consuming them in certain ways, and I'm just really grateful to live at a time when these things are coming to light and where we have the technology to monitor the brains under these conditions, to monitor the bodies and how they react to these conditions, 
to monitor the mushrooms themselves and finding out how to collect samples from like agaricus, the giant mushrooms, and take it back to the lab and grow them. Because we need to preserve this. It's like Stamets said. He said the agaricus in this forest can be an anti a strong antiviral. It can completely annihilate and destroy VX nerve gas. It's the only thing known to do so. And so he says we should be saving our old growth forests as a matter of national defense. And I could not agree more. So, peace everybody. Have